again and welcome back to my kitchen. I guess my brain is just kind of stuck in soup mode lately um, because today I would like to share another wonderful soup recipe for canning uh, with all of you. And what it is is clam chowder base. Now clam chowder, we do the New England style clam chowder, um, you know, the white, creamy, wonderful clam chowder, not the Manhattan with the, with the tomato base. Um, I just prefer the cream-based one. But this is another one of those soups that I just elect not to add the dairy as I'm canning it. And then when I go to heat and serve, I just add my dairy at that point in time just to finish it up before we um, eat it. So, and the reason why I do that, I explained in another video. The reason why I do that is um, dairy is generally canned at an extremely short amount of time. It doesn't take very long to can dairy safely, um, but when you combine dairy with any sort of a meat product, you have to can it for so long due to the meat product that the dairy just doesn't withstand that heat for that long, and it tends to scorch and burn and curdle and separate, and it just doesn't hold up well. So whenever I am canning soup that is a dairy-based or cream-based soup, I just elect to can the soup base without the dairy in it, and then, like I said, add it when I go to heat and serve. So this recipe is so simple. It's another one of those things that I just literally, I assemble right in the jars. I do not cook my soup first and then put it in my canning jars. I just create the soup in the jar itself. This is super simple. Everybody can do this. Now, one of the things I do want to mention to you today is because we are working with clams, it is suggested not to can um, seafood in anything larger than a one pint jar, all right? So um, I will be sharing pint size measurements with you today. And seafood is uh, canned for additional time above meat. Um, so even though these are smaller jars, they're going to be canned for a longer period of time just because we are working with clams. So my recipe today will fill 15 pints, okay? And I am going to be using my Presto um, 23 where I can double stack pint jars in it. Now, if you don't have a large enough uh, canner to double stack, just feel free to cut the recipe in half and only do, you know, approximately seven pints instead of all 15. Um, but what you will need, um, first of all, is clams. And here in Minnesota, um, well, first of all, they're not really cheap. <laughs> I don't know if they're cheaper in other places of the country, but in Minnesota, clams are not cheap. And I cannot find large cans of, of clams. Um, the only thing that I can find in my local grocery stores are these small 6.5 ounce cans. And I do use, for this 15 pints, I use 10 of these 6.5 ounce cans of clams. Of clams and what I do is I open and I drain them and reserve that wonderful clam juice that comes out of that jar okay reserve that because we will need this for making our soup and sometimes what I also do is I also go ahead and I buy just additional clam juice um, just in case I need a little bit more uh, to fill my pint jars so, I will just uh, read my recipe to you, and then we will get to assembling these. And like I said, so simple, you guys. You're going to love this. Um, we need two to three um, quarts of cl clams. And like I said, I use ten of these small cans for these 15 pints. We need three quarts of cubed raw potatoes. We need one large onion chopped. And we need two pounds of bacon or pork. Uh, pork salt or salt pork, I guess it's called, but I just use bacon and I use two packages of that. And then what I do is I just, I cut my raw bacon up and I slightly fry it in a pan to kind of remove some of the fat content off of it, okay? But it, you don't want to fry it crispy, okay? You want it still to be soft, but kind of render some of that fat off of that. So this is really the only thing that you have to really prepare ahead of time is just cooking your bacon. And then, of course, you can see that I've got my onions and my uh, my clams are all drained and my onions are chopped and the t my potatoes are, of course, peeled and 
um, cut up also. But we're just going to go ahead and we are going to start assembling all this goodness into our jars. And what I do, I think I'm going to move these forward just a little bit, give myself a little bit more space. What I do is I just take the bacon and I just equally distribute that throughout my jars. All right, just kind of add a three fingered pinch, two fingered pinch to each jar. Just get it all equally distributed. Doesn't take very much bacon per jar. Bacon or salt part pork if you're doing the salt pork. And these things assemble so quickly, you guys. It's just amazing. In no time at all, you're going to have 15 wonderful pints of soup for your shelves and for the future. You know what? I don't think I'm aimed down there for you. There. Now you can see what I'm doing. You know me. I get ahead of myself sometimes. Okay, we got that done. I'm going to go ahead and wipe my hand off here. Bacon is greasy, you know. And we are going to take our drained clams, and we are just going to start putting one tablespoon into each jar. And we will go back and equally distribute, if we have any left, we'll go ahead and equally distribute the rest of the into the jars also. But I just... With the clams, you know, because I mean, I don't have a whole lot of excess um, clams, I just start with one tablespoon per pint, and then I go back and, you know, add more to each one. And I think we have enough clams today that we can probably get two tablespoons into each pint. But of course, you know, that just really depends on how many clams you have, what, you know, what brand you purchased, how well those cans were packed when you opened them, all that stuff. So that's why I just start out with one tablespoon per pint, just to make sure all of my jars have some of that wonderful good clam goodness in each one. Alrighty, we got all that in there, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to equally distribute that one large onion, and that again, I just kind of eyeball just a pinch in each jar. And I might not even use all these onions. You know, clam chowder is one of those things, I guess I don't want a really strong onion flavor in, because I like the flavor of the clam. And uh, clams can be easily overpowered. And that combination of the clam and the bacon is just, oh, you guys, it's fantastic. I really prefer the bacon over the salt pork, to be honest. I kind of like that smoky, smoky flavor. Okay, it doesn't look like I'm overdone in a lot of my jars, so I'm just going to go back and add just a few more. Oh, 
All right. We've used up the entire large onion today. It looks good. All righty, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one quarter of a teaspoon of ground black pepper into each pint jar. Now we really don't need to add salt to these um, because the salt pork or the bacon is going to lend a lot of salt already to each pint. So I don't add any additional salt at all, but I do add pepper to this. And one quarter of a teaspoon per pint. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and we are going to add our cubed potatoes to each pint jar. And we will fill to approximately one inch head space. Hopefully I've peeled enough potatoes today. You know me, I just eyeball everything. And I thought, oh, that looks like enough to fill all those jars. And these, are, these potatoes are just totally raw, all right? I just peeled and cubed them. I think I did end up rinsing these a couple of times. You know, when you cube potatoes, a lot of starch comes out. So I did um, add, I rinsed and added fresh water a couple of different times. But in this particular recipe, it really doesn't matter. Because when you add that clam juice, it's kind of cloudy anyway. So if you have a lot of starch in your potatoes, that's not a problem at all. And these are just regular russet potatoes. You can do the potato of your choice. Russets really hold up in this recipe and at this amount of time uh, that it's required for canning. Okay, and then I'm just going to go back and add a few more potatoes throughout my jars, since I have some in each jar. I can add a few more. What you, what you talking about, Sadie? Sadie, it's okay. Nobody's here. No, no, no. No one's here, honey. Well, I'm not, I'm not looking out the window. How do I know nobody's here? <laughs> We're not expecting anybody to be here. Sadie! Good girl. Good girl. Boy, you guys, I just, I did just perfect on estimating those potatoes. Two or three quarts of raw cut potatoes. All right. I have a few more chunks that I can fit in there. Perfection. All right, guys. Now all we are going to do is we are going to take that reserved clam juice and fill our jars to one inch headspace. I'm going to scant it a little bit just in case I don't have enough juice to uh, completely fill my jars. And if I don't have enough to completely fill my jars, then I'll add just a touch of water, which is no problem at all. But we want some of that clam goodness in each and every jar.
And this is why I elect, like I said, to buy additional clam juice. Just because I really, really like that heavy clam flavor in my clam chowder. But if you elect not to, that's fine. Just equally distribute the juice that you have just in your jars of clams. That's absolutely fine to do. All right, I am totally out of clam juice. I used the reserve juice um, from all of my um, cans of clams, and then I went through four of these bottles, and I do need a little additional water today, so I'm going to run and fill up my quart jar with water, and I will be right back. All right, guys, so I cleaned up my area a little bit since I had to run after a little bit of water, and uh, we'll just finish filling each one of our jars to one inch headspace with water. Now mind you, this is like room temperature water. This is not hot water at all. Everything is room temperature. Nothing has to be boiling for this. I think I already added to that one. Okay. We are at our one inch headspace. Now you can see that some of my potatoes aren't necessarily covered. Let's see, what is a good example? This one is a good example. You can see my potatoes aren't exactly necessarily covered with that one inch headspace. That's okay, guys. Everything that's going to cook down those potatoes are going to be covered in the final end result. So don't worry about that, but leave that good one inch headspace because this does kind of bubble up in the canning process. All right, just going to settle some of those down in there a little bit better. And we are off to the races. We are going to go ahead and just wipe the rims of our jar with a clean wet washcloth like every other canning application. Make sure we don't have any grease on that rim or any food particles, little bits of clam or maybe some pepper or whatever it might be. We want to make sure that it's wiped clean. And again today, I am going to use my wonderful superb canning lids. And when I'm using my superb lids, I do not tighten them as tight as other, uh, other brands of canning lids because the superb have... So much sealing compound on them, wonderful thick sealing compound, but they do kind of have a hard time venting properly. And so I don't crank down my rings um, fingertip tight like uh, with all other brands. I leave them just a tad looser so that they can vent. And then after the process, I just gently snug them up when I'm removing them from the canner. So there we have all of those wiped. We are going to get our prepared wash lids onto our jars. And then I'm going to get my canning rings on. Ouch! Get my elbow. My Belbo Baggins. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to have to run after one more ring. But now, like I said, I don't tighten these like other, other uh, canning lids. What I do is I just tighten them to the very first sign of resistance. And then I'm going to get them into my PC. Now we are going to PC these pints. And I know this sounds terribly long, but remember that this is the rule with seafood. We are going to PC pints for 100 minutes. Yes, that is longer than even quarts of meat or beans. Um, 100 minutes sounds like overkill, um, but that is what is suggested for seafood. <clears throat> So I'm just going to go ahead and finish getting these all in the canner. Now, like I said, I've got my uh, Presto 23 today so that I can double stack my pint jars. And I will place a rack in between the two layers. All right, I'm going to run and get my rack, and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm just going to separate my lower and upper um, layers of jars with another canning rack and get the rest of my pint jars stacked on top. Now, if you would prefer, if you do not pressure can or you prefer to water bath, this soup would require four hours hot water bath, all right? So in the, in the PC, in the pressure canner, Pints of clam chowder are 100 minutes. If you are going to hot water bath, it would be four hours hot water bath. Beautiful. Look at how easy that was, guys. So quick and easy. And I'll just get my lid locked on, and I am going to bring this up. I'm going to heat it slowly, okay, um, because since we are starting with uh, cold items or room temperature items, um, I really prefer to uh, heat up my canner slowly. So I only heat it over medium heat. I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to vent for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to put the weight um, that is appropriate for my altitude on and bring it up to pressure and pressure can for 100 minutes. And like I said, if you would prefer to hot water bath it, this is a hot water bath of four hours. So after these are all processed and done, I will come back and show you the amazing results. All right, so I got through the, the uh, total time of canning process, and I allowed my lid lock um, to drop, and then I removed my weight, and I just cracked open my pressure canner just a little bit, all right? You never want to just... Remove that lid very drastically because all of the cool room air rushes into that extremely hot canner and it causes overflow issues, all right? So, after allowing it to cool at least another 10 minutes, then I kind of propped it off to the side just a little bit more, like what you can see at this point in time. I'm going to just turn my canner, all right? So, my first movement... I'll just I'll set it back on there and I'll let you know. Alright, so I allowed my lid lock button to drop, I removed my weight, and then I just cracked it open ever so slightly. Like just a little tiny movement about like that. Alright? Just so that you have maybe about a quarter of an inch in between the base of the canner and your lid. And I let that cool for another 10 or 15 minutes. And then I moved it off just a little bit more so that you can see, you know, nothing is lined up, but I'm not allowing all of that cold room air to just rush into the canner either. And I just cracked it this far, and I allowed it to cool for another 10 or 15 minutes. Now I feel it's safe to completely remove the lid and remove and complete tightening the jars. And I'm going to page down. I've already removed two, but I just wanted to kind of back up and show you exactly what it is that I do with these superb canning lids. Because, as I told you, I put them into the canner very loose. And then when I'm removing from the canner, 
I tighten them or snug them up a little bit. But I never grab the jar, even with like a hot pad or anything like that. I just place them on the counter and then snug them up just gently with my fingers and allow them to cool the rest of the way. And this is how I work my superb lids. And you guys, I have never had a failure with these things. I have never had a failure to seal doing it this way. Now that one didn't want to move that much. And that's fine, you know, don't force it at all. I'm going to tip up just a little bit more so that you can see. I'm going to remove as well as I can find. There. If I can find something to actually remove it with. Then I just take that separator out, you know, that separates the two layers. Take that out and continue gently removing my jars. And just give them just a gentle snug up with three fingers. And allow them to cool naturally. And you can hear the lids popping. Just amazing seals on these lids. But you don't want to do this too quickly either. If you don't allow your canner to cool off slowly, you will have issues. So make sure that you do it in stages. Just whoop, barely crack open that lid and give it about 10 or 15 minutes and then crack it open a little bit further. Give it another 10 or 15 minutes and then carefully remove those jars and gently snug up those rings. All right, so we are just going to allow these to cool completely and then probably in the morning it's getting kind of late at night at this point in time I'm just going to allow these to just cool off overnight and in the morning there goes another one of those wonderful lids just sealing so beautifully in the morning then I will uh, well maybe not in the morning so much but maybe at lunchtime or whatever um, after they have all cooled and sealed, <laughs> I love that noise, you guys. That's just an awesome noise. After they have all cooled and sealed, I will remove my screw on rings. I will wash them up in the sink. And maybe at lunchtime, um, what I will do is I will prepare one of these wonderful clam chowders and show you how I complete it um, and heat and serve. So, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so I am back. I got through the 100 minutes um, processing time, allowed my canner to cool naturally, gave it a couple extra cool down, uh, you know, cracks on the lid, you know how I do that. And then I allowed my jars to seal and cool overnight. I had 100% sealing success. I had zero siphoning um, with this product. Uh, I'm telling you guys, these superb lids are the bomb, honestly. Um, this morning when I got up, I removed the rings and I scrubbed up my jars really well. And I will let you see how wonderful this clam chowder is after canning. Look at that beautiful product. You can see the clams and the bacon in the bottom. You can see that the potatoes have held up really well. I think I moved this one around a lot while I was scrubbing it. Maybe one of these other ones will show up a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. All of those wonderful clams and potatoes, a little bit of bacon, the clam juice. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I am excited for supper tonight. Now, all it really takes is 
popping open one of these jars of clam chowder. You can go ahead and you can eat it this way, but if you want the, the traditional New England clam chowder, then we need to add a little bit of heavy cream to it. And to each pint jar, I only add one cup of heavy cream. You could also use like um, half and half. Uh, you could use whole milk, um, just whatever your preference is. Um, but there is quite a bit of liquid in these, and so I only use one cup per pint jar. Um, I'm going to pop open a couple of jars tonight because all of us are home to eat supper, and so I feel that's how much I need. But I did want to draw your attention. This is a quart of cream that I canned back in June of 21. And I feel, I feel like I need to use it just simply because you can see that my, uh, my ring or <clears throat> my lids are starting to just kind of get a little corroded. We've got a little bit of a moisture problem in our uh, storage area that you know, we try to keep up with it, but it is what it is. But anyway, this is only, what, uh, a couple of months from being three years old on the shelf, and it is still completely sealed. It looks lovely. What I do before I open any of my, uh, my dairy products, my milk products, or whatever, I give them a good shake, okay? Because sometimes your cream um, kind of gets a little solidified on top, especially with your heavy cream, but... Um, Whole milk can do that too. The cream kind of separates out of the whole milk and it kind of leaves this thick layer. But if you give it a shake before you open up that jar, you guys, it just reincorporates and remixes. But, oh, you know what? I forgot, I forgot to grab my opener. I'll be right back. Well, I mentioned my opener. There has been quite a few people that have asked and inquired about this opener. This is a vintage jar opener called Pryolid. Um, Sometimes you can get lucky and find these in uh, thrift stores or at estate sales or auctions. Um, sometimes you can find them on eBay, but this is actually a vintage piece. Now, just as a little additional information for you, I have noticed, um, because I'm always watching and reading and looking all over the place, I've noticed that the Four Jars Lid Company, and you've heard me talk about Four Jars before too, they have excellent canning lids also. But anyway, I noticed that the Four Jars Company is now newly manufacturing this type of uh, lid opener. And it causes absolutely no damage to your canning lids at all. So, I just figured I'd share that little bit of information with you. I'm going to tip up just a little bit here so that you can see my pan also. So, we'll get these popped open. Oh, love that superb seal. And just dump that into your pan. Oh, it smells so good. It smells so, so good. Get that dumped into our pan. And then I'm just going to heat that for a few minutes until it's nice and hot before I add my cream. Now, like I said, my cream, I only add one cup per pint jar. I feel like that's enough dairy products in there. Um, it lends that creamy richness. Um, so I don't overdo um, the dairy aspect. But... So after I get this heated up quite a bit, then I'm going to add my two cups of um, heavy cream. I'm also going to add just a tablespoon or two of butter into this just for a little added, um, I guess, richness and whatever to it just to round it out. So I'm going to get this heated up. I'm going to add my cream and my butter to it, heat it through, and then I'll come back and I'll put some in a bowl for you. Guys, while I'm heating up my soup, I realized that I did not give you the opportunity really to see what the consistency and how well this stuff holds together is. Um, let me tip you down just a little bit more. So I remembered while I was heating it up and I thought, oh, before I get that cream in there, I should show you how wonderful this is. Look at how well those potatoes, even at that extended canning time, look at how well they hold together. The bacon holds together well. The clams hold together well. This is just an amazing, amazing thing. All right, so I'm just going to pop that right back into my pan where I'm heating the soup. Get you aimed back up there again. And um, now that it's heated pretty well through, uh, this is when I add just about two tablespoons of butter, about one tablespoon of butter per pint. And since I have 
the two pints of soup, I'm doing two tablespoons of butter. And then one cup of heavy cream per pint. Since I'm doing two, I'm going to do two cups of heavy cream. Say that's good. And then I am just going to heat that through again really, really well. Make sure my butter is melted and everything is super hot. And I will come back at that point in time and uh, get some back in the bowl for you to see. All right, so I have it completely heated through, and I am ready to show you the absolute final results here. Oh, you guys, so yummy. If you are a fan of uh, clam chowder like I am, you are really going to love this one. And so quick and easy, you guys, absolutely just easy to do. Look at how wonderful this soup is. Amazing chunks of potatoes, chunks of bacon, your clams in there. Just beautiful. So I like to, of course, put a few little oyster crackers on mine. A lot of my soups I like to have oyster crackers. <laughs> Uh, it's just one of my little things. One of my little glitches in life, guys. Gotta have those oyster crackers, I guess. <laughs> anyway, we'll give this a little taste. Super, super hot. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab one of those wonderful potatoes, okay? I'm trying not to burn my mouth like I did on the chili. Oh, mm. mm hmm. Absolutely delicious. And that potato, you have to chew it, guys. It didn't go to mush at all, even with the extended canning time. Now, remember, I use russets. I cannot speak for, you know, um, yellow potatoes. Those are a little bit softer. I don't know how red potatoes would fold up, um, but the russets hold up just wonderful. The touch of bacon in there is amazing. And remember, you could use salt pork if you prefer to do that. And the bacon in this. Mm, mm hmm You have to chew that too. So nothing goes to mush. I think I left my burner on. I did. I better stir that so it doesn't scorch for the guys. They've got to eat this too. <laughs> anyway, you guys, so easy. Now, this isn't one of the cheapest things to do. You know, clams are pretty expensive, but it sure is simple and it sure is wonderful to have homemade clam chowder on your shelves for any meal at any time. It is a good, good thing. Thank you so much for spending your time with me again today. God bless you all, and happy canning, everybody.